Hey guys, CB Super. So Ian from the UK asks if we can make a chrome color for some text. And actually we can pretty easily inside of DaVinci Resolve. Let's go ahead and jump in. So in order to make a good looking chrome color, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually create this in 3D and then render it out into 2D. So you can bring in a text node, a merge node, a camera, a light, and a render node. And let's go ahead and just kind of move them all over here a little bit. And we'll pipe this out to the media out. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in this background as well and just kind of merge this onto this background just so I can see this up here in the left hand corner. So I'm not gonna go completely over how to do a bunch of things in 3D. If you guys are interested, I have a couple other videos. They'll be up in the right hand corner. One of those videos is just uh, the basics on creating 3D scenes. And then the other one is how to animate text in 3D. So if you haven't watched those, you may wanna go check those out first. I will be talking a little bit about materials and text and then just animating the camera a little bit, as well as reflections. All right, so inside the inspector, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this uh, 3D text and just type in Chrome and load that into one of the viewers so we can kind of see it. All right, so to uh, to orbit around, all you have to do is hold down the Alt and middle mouse button and that'll orbit around. Um, I can hold down the middle mouse button and that'll pan around. And then if I want to zoom in and out, I can hold down the command and I can scroll in and out. Likewise, if I'm not holding the command button when I scroll, it's just gonna move up and down. All right, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and come down here in the text node down to extrusion and instead of classic I'm actually going to switch over to custom and I'm going to give it a little bit of extrusion depth one thing to note is that it extrudes forwards not backwards like in some other programs and I'm going to give it a little bit of bevel now we don't see anything being rendered out and that's probably because our camera actually isn't facing it's actually pushed a little bit past so as we start to move the camera backwards we'll now start to see how big the letters actually are Let's go ahead and pull this out until we can actually see the word Chrome. That's probably good enough. And we'll bring the spotlight up as well. Um, so one thing we can do while we're still clicking on the camera is over here in the Transform tab, we can come down to where it says Pivot and we can use Target. What that's going to do is it's going to drop a little shape box right at the world origin, which happens to be the same location as our 3D text. So if I move this uh, camera up or down, it's always going to keep the 3D box in the center of the frame. So that's kind of cool because if we move it left or right, you'll see that um, it's always going to at least point at wherever that box is. So as long as that box is located wherever our text is, it's always going to face that text. We can do the same thing to the spotlight. If we come over, click on spotlight, click on the transform tool, click on use target. Now inside the spotlight, we can go ahead and move the spotlight back maybe move it up. We don't see anything happening and that's because we have to come over to this render 3D node and we have to actually enable the lighting. We're going to enable shadows as well. We may not use it. Um, come over to the camera, and t hit camera 3D1. We're probably not going to have multiple cameras in the scene. If you, if your computer supports OpenGL rendering, you can go ahead and click on that. Uh, but to be honest, uh, you'll probably be just fine with software renderer here. Now, if we uh, come into the spotlight, and we come a little bit closer to the lettering here, we can see what the lighting effects will have on our actual lettering. So as we move it around, you'll see that the highlights change and specifically closer to wherever the bevel is. And that's kind of why we threw in that bevel. We can actually come back in here and now that I look at it, we can adjust the extrusion profile and you can adjust it however you want. Um, play around with it, you'll, you'll find that you get some some drastically different effects. You can also maybe give it more extrusion depth. You can give it more subdivisions if you feel like there just isn't enough detail in there. Uh, and, and, and feel free to really just play with that. All right, so let's go ahead and start adjusting this text so that we can make it look a little bit more like Chrome. All right, so this is what it looks like right now. Uh, it kind of looks a little Chrome-ish just by moving the lighting around. Let's go ahead and give it some color. So if we come over here to the shading tab, um, we can actually change this color to sort of a gray. And right away we notice, okay, there's definitely, the lighting helps, um, the bevel helps. We're changing the color, that's giving us a little bit more of a metallic look. 
You can also come in here and you can change the specular color. You could, uh, if you want a little bit of um, difference, say if you want like a little bit of a sheen, you could give it a little bit of a sheen. Um, it kind of depends on what your background is going to look like. So that kind of helps a little bit. You know, it gives us kind of like a metallic reflective look. But what we're doing here is we're just really kind of faking it. If that helps and if that's good enough for what you want to do, you can go that route. But let's go ahead and explore adding some actual materials to this text 3D node. One thing that's actually kind of hidden inside of DaVinci is they already have some materials that are made for you. So if you come into effects library and twirl down the templates, you'll come down here to shaders. Click on shaders and you'll notice there's already some materials. There's brush metal, which you had mentioned in your uh, comment. There's a car paint material, which is kind of neat. Carbon fiber. Um, there's chrome. You've got a marble, a rock look. But let's go ahead and bring out chrome. And again, play with all of these materials. You may find a material in there that you like even more. So. But let's take a look at Chrome. It's already grouped together. I'm just going to leave it grouped for now. And I'm going to load it into this viewer to kind of see what it looks like. So if I hold down the Alt or Option key and I use my middle mouse button, I can actually scroll this around and you can kind of take a look at uh, the material itself. It's very reflective. It's uh, very metallic and reflective. And this is just moving the light around and I'm just doing this with my middle mouse button. All right, so I want to load this material, which is Chrome, up onto this 3D node. In order to do that, I can't, I can't just loaded in there it doesn't have any place to receive any kind of material but if you click on the 3d text and you hit shift space you can type the word replace and we can use this replace material 3d node with that selected i could drop this directly into the text 3d and now you'll see that um, it has a chrome look to it which is pretty cool if that's good enough again you know like you could be done right there but we can still do a few more things to to, to go even a few more steps further so one thing that we don't really have inside of this uh, inside this replace 3D material is we don't have any options to to change any of the attributes inside of the Chrome. We could double click and come into this Chrome node, which is actually just a bunch of nodes that are grouped together. But to be honest, I think it'd be a little bit easier if we just kind of move this out of the way and we bring in another material. Maybe we'll bring in like a blend. Um, there's several different types of shaders too. So if we come in here and we come back up to tools and we go to 3D and then material, um, you have a bunch of different materials in here. You can also come over here to texture and there's a bunch of different nodes that will help you in designing some textures. And we'll use a couple of these in a few minutes, but I'm not gonna really get deep into textures, materials or lighting or anything right in this tutorial. This is gonna be a very basic tutorial on how to create just the Chrome look. But there is a lot of tools. If you do want to uh, dive deeper into that, there's there's plenty to dive into. Okay, so we brought the blend material. Let's go ahead and plug this Chrome into the blend material. And now let's see what the difference is. All right, so let's actually plug Chrome in over here and then blend over here. And you'll notice that it's a slightly better looking material, but we also have the ability to uh, change the intensity of the specular highlight by turning it up or down. We can also change the exponent, which is going to make it wider or softer. But that's not it. Uh, to be honest, there's it's actually all of these other tabs, like the specular color, the bump map. You can use specular maps, specular intensity maps. There's, there's a bunch of different other maps and things that we can use inside of that blend. And to, and to be honest, we're really not going to get into it today, but just know that it's probably going to be better to pull that chrome into the blend uh, before you start bringing it into the uh, replace material 3D. All right, so now we've done that, we can come in here to the blend and if we want, we can go ahead and change the specular intensity of that. So there's that, but you know what? Um, I kind of want some reflections as well. I think some reflections would really go a long way. Let's kind of look at what we're, the final merged output is looking at, and that looks pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and really quickly, let's take this light. Let's go ahead and move this light around and just see how that's changing things. So this is cool, right? As you get a more side lighting, you're going to light it up different ways. So you could take multiple different lights and you can color them and you can have them coming from different angles to give highlights. Say you could have like a blue on the left and then like an orange on the right to get your kind of blue and teal look. There's several different things you can do to play around with the lighting. And I would really recommend that you guys just move the light around, see how it interacts with your with your text. Uh, I think you'll get a bunch of different um, effects. And to be honest, like that's going to give you like really interesting looks and very cheaply. If you haven't already done that, play around with that. 
but let's go ahead and introduce some kind of reflections. So in order to introduce a reflection, I'm just going to bring in a piece of media. It's just an image. If we take a look at what it is, it's just this picture of an outdoor scene. And I want to introduce this as a reflection into this, uh, this chrome material. So to do that, um, we're going to need a couple different nodes. One node we're probably going to need is the sphere map. And what that does is that takes that image and it maps it onto a sphere. And then we're going to need another node called the reflect node. So the reflect node is actually going to create some reflections and it's, it, it's quite interesting in the way that it does this. So let's go ahead and take this blend material and we'll plug it into the reflect node so we can kind of see what it's doing. So by default it's not doing anything but it's plugged in and now this uh, blend material or I should say blend chrome material is now plugged in to the reflect node. Now let's take this sphere map, hold the right mouse key or the alt button and drop it in and we want it to be a reflection color material. And now we notice we get some reflections on our ball that match up to whatever the image showed. So if I come into the sphere map and I want to change this, I can come into rotation and I can kind of rotate it and it's going to move those reflections around, changing the reflection. And now I can just load this into the material and we can replace it with this material. As it is by default in the reflect, it's set up by, uh, by angle. So the strength variability is set up by the angle. So it's gonna kind of depend on what angle the camera is viewing. You know, we'll come into the actual merge node here. So depending on what angle your camera is viewing it, it's gonna change it, which we're not gonna get a super strong effect from, from this. But if we come over here and we click on constant, it's gonna turn it on as a uh, constant reflection. And then we can just tailor back this constant strength until we get pretty much wherever we want in the uh, reflections. As you see, when you move it around, you'll still get movement in the reflections. It's gonna kinda depend on where the camera is. So if we come back to the camera, as the camera moves, the reflections will move. And I haven't played around a whole lot with this reflect node. Um, I do wanna dive deeper into the the 3D text more inside of DaVinci. So this is all kind of, um, I want to say this is mostly kind of new to me because I usually do any 3D text work. I'll do it in Blender and then I'll just composite it into whatever compositing program I'm using at the time, which is now Fusion. That being said, um, I do think this is kind of neat. It's a cheap way to get some reflections. So that's pretty much it. If for whatever reason uh, you don't want this Chrome, we can always come back up and to our materials, come back over to the shaders. We can try out um, maybe that brushed aluminum that you had mentioned. We can plug that in and we can see what the difference will be. You're, you're obviously gonna get different looks, play around with the position of your spotlight. I think you guys will be surprised at uh, what different effects you can have. Also, if, these, uh, if, this, if this image is too intense, like if um, you, you think the reflections need to be muted a bit, you can always come in here, shift space, add in a blur, and then you can just up this blur size just a little bit to, to whatever you need. If, if you just feel like it's you're able to see the reflections too much. Um, ideally, it'd be nice if you can get reflections from the actual environment that you're gonna be placing this text. And the nice thing about this is once it's merged out, it's basically a 2D effect that you created in 3D but are now using it in a 2D environment. This is how you can create chrome or brushed aluminum text inside of DaVinci Resolve. I hope you guys got something out of this. If you guys like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.